This is a video of my homemade wind vane that I have, my Bristol Channel Cutter. It's a Lyle Hess designed Bristol Channel Cutter, 28 feet on deck. I'm going to first start showing you how it works while I'm under sail. At this point in time I'm basically under a, a broad reach, almost running downwind moving probably about six knots through the water. We probably have about ten knots. Doesn't this look like the right way to keep watch instead of holding on to a tiller or a wheel? This design that I'm going to show you is really not that great for most boats. My boat has an aft hung rudder, a full keel, a boomkin, and a backstay that I was able to attach the vane to. This is a wind vane gear. It gets its leverage through a trim tab that is attached to the rudder and you're going to see pictures of that a little later on. So this is last summer 2014 somewhere off the coast of Turkey between Turkey and Greece. This is some more videos of me keeping watch. It's a beautiful day. You can see the wind vane is pointing downwind now. So you adjust the vane gear by the apparent wind direction. Right now we're going to be going downwind. This is hard for most wind vanes to run is downwind. Well, I actually guess this is still more of a broad reach. But we're approaching Chesney, Turkey. It's my friend Roger there with the beard. We took the sunshade off. You can see the relative wind direction by where the wind vane is pointed to. The wind vane consists of the vane itself, which is connected to the control wheel, which is connected to a swivel attachment that allows it to pivot around the backstay. And then I have a continuous line that runs to the control arm that controls the trim tab, and that's where you get the leverage. So we're sort of on a broad reach here. It's a beautiful day of sailing. I can take one finger on the trim tab control arm and I can tell somebody to hold on to the tiller as tight as they can and keep it from moving. And with my one finger, I can pull them across the cockpit. They cannot keep me from moving that tiller with my one finger on the trim tab control arm. I have a podcast, Sailing in the Mediterranean. I'm going to try to get you to listen to it because I'd like to have more listeners. So here we are. We're nice, broad reach. Beautiful day. That's Chesme Turkey off in the distance. All right now we're on the downwind run. You can see I have the jib pulled out. I could have the main up, but I prefer when I'm going dead downwind not to have the main up because I always worry about an accidental jibe, even if I could put a preventer out. I find my boat sails better just with the jib up going downwind. When I have the main up, it tends to try to pivot the boat around the mast. So you can see the wind vane is showing that it's downwind. This is probably the minimum amount of wind that I can sail downwind with the wind vane because you lose your apparent wind. There's just not enough wind over the stern to, to really give you enough leverage to control it. You tend to wander around more downwind. So quite often when I'm running downwind, I will take off the wind vane and put on an electric auto helm. my navigation center, that Garmin, nav Garmin GPS there. How do I build it? Here's some descriptions, a lot of descriptions. This book is the book you really want to get if you're going to try to design self-steering, vane type or wind type self-steering. Consists of the wind vane, which is not attached at this point in time. This is when I put my boat up. And then you've got the control arm which is attached to the top of the trim tab shaft and down below that you see the trim tab itself.
pin tab is attached to the rudder by its own set of pindles and gudgeons. The shaft is the gudgeon. And that, sh that trim tab is made out of teeth. A slight leading edge gives it a little more leverage through the water. And you can see I have zincs on there that have to be replaced. One of those zincs is so solid. Okay, this is the swivel on the bottom. This is critical. This is the key to how it pivots around the backstay. That cable is the backstay. And you can see the ball bearings that allows the control wheel. This is the looking at the top, looking down. You can see I've got that slot cut in that swivel so I can get my antenna coaxial cable up. This is the actual drawing of the unit. You can probably figure it out now that you've seen some pictures. Some more pictures of it. See how the coax cable comes up through the slot in the swivel. That swivel stays stable. It doesn't move, but the control wheel, which is mounted on it, swivels up. This is the top swivel. This is all it is. And if you see it, you can see that my counterweight is putting enough weight that it's not actually rubbing on the aluminum, it's actually rubbing on the other part. There's the counterweight at the bottom of the control wheel. You can see the ball bearings and the swivel at the bottom there as well. I put together this video because I have, some, and that's my cutout. When I made a new control arm, I that's my design that I sent the jet cutter. And those are all the parts that I made from the bronze. I have a new bronze one ready to go on. This is just more information on it. When I come into port, people are always coming up and looking at my wind vane and trying to figure it out and taking pictures of it. So this YouTube video will help people that are curious about it learn a little bit more about it. I did not design this. Larry Party of Taliesin is the original designer of this particular wind vane. I copied it. Okay, record. Okay, so the length of the actual vein from the top to the middle strut is 64 and a half inches long. The overall length is This is how you can get a hold of me, Franz at MedSailor.com. Please consider subscribing to my podcast, Sailing in the Mediterranean. And if you have some stories to share, please get a hold of me. I'm looking for people to interview. 
that have services or stories for sailors in the Mediterranean. Thanks.